So Father's Day comes and everyone's like, what kind of gifts did you get? What kind of gifts did you get? For me, like, I just like golf stuff, right? And, you know, wife made a nice little breakfast. And so I was thinking about other gifts that you see other dads get. And so I saw your former head coach, your college head coach, Nick Saban, got a, got a new Father's Day gift. And so he's trying it out. Um, tell me, what do you think about this? Uh, Nick Saban got a, a, a VR for uh, Father's Day. <laughs> that is... And, uh, <laughs> first of all, he got to put his hands up, though, right the right he, way. He, he does have to put his hands up a little bit. Um, he, oh, oh, we got a jab, too. Look at that jab. Jab. I've, I've jab. never seen him. Wow. <laughs> wow. Was that a coordination? What's, what's happening? Was that a backhand? <laughs> he's, <laughs> like, got, he's got some coordination going on there, though. <laughs> I can't believe it. Yes. Yeah, Wow. Can you believe that that Nick this Saban? This is actually surprising to see. Actually, why is it surprising? Tell us why is it surprising. You don't really get to see this side of Coach Saban too often, of him playing around with anything other than coaching. But mm -hmm. he does love his kids, so I, I can I can see that. Probably the grandkids and all that. So it's uh, the grandkids got him. I would imagine. Do you think that you probably rubbed off on him a little bit? <sighs> maybe you know he, <laughs> he he probably wanted to fight me a lot when I was there. So maybe <laughs> he's he's getting the aftermath. Uh, down the line. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but, you know, just seeing your old coach there, you mentioned he's you know, the influence on you. What is it, what is, one, one thing that you took away from Nick Saban in college? What I took away from him was he just, no matter what really happened, you know, whether a player made you mad, whether you did wrong, whether he seemed like he hated you, the next day it was like a completely clean slate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, like I said, you know, I – I redshirted my first year. There's a lot of yelling, but you know, every day I came in, you know, as a as a kid, you want to be like that was personal, but it never right. really was to me. Um, and so, I took away that um, just coming in a new day. And then, mm -hmm. honestly, the other crazy thing was he was just like sometimes just robot mind. Like it was just when he was in work, it was mm -hmm. the craziest thing. I remember we had our freshman day. We all were at the lake having a good time. 24 hours later, he's yelling at you like he like you didn't just have a good time. And then yeah. you go to his house for Thanksgiving. He's all the happiest guy. But when he's at work, he's there to work. And when mm -hmm. he's off, he's completely off. So <laughs> that's what I took from him. Uh, really great guy. Good. Yeah, that's uh, Marlon Humphrey, Ravens cornerback, joining the Rich Eisen Show. Kirk Morrison here filling in for Rich. And Marlon, you're uh, you're the OG now. Can, can, can you like yeah. think about this? And, for yeah. people out there listening, I always say the OG, meaning the old guy in the room, yeah. right, yeah. is the guy who's been in the league probably six years plus in that meeting room. You're going on year seven. Yeah. Do you feel like you're the the old guy now, Marlon? Yeah, I am the old guy now. <laughs> it's it's weird to bring up guys, bring up stories. Right. And then as you start talking, you start reading everybody's faces and you're realizing nobody was here when those guys were here except me. So being the OG is weird. Um, no one's called me an old head yet. You know, I used to call Calais old head, you know, all these other guys, you know, so no one's called me the old head yet. So maybe they still see me as a young guy. But, you know, nowadays, you know, I, I'd be sore from little bitty. I'd be sore from a walkthrough. So. Uh, but but being being an old head is uh you know a testament to hard work you know I know the average is like three or four years, so I'm trying to you know keep it going. But uh, being the OG is, is weird, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah, drafted number 16 overall back in 2017 by the Ravens. Who was that player for you when you first got into that NFL locker room? Who was the player that you gravitated to to say, hey, either show me the way or I'm going to follow that person's lead. It's probably a combination of uh, Brandon Carr and Eric Weddle. Um, Weddle sat next to me in meetings, and, you know, it was it was never – he used to tell me to stop smacking on sunflower seeds, which I didn't even know was possible. <laughs> but um, Eric Weddle was definitely the smartest guy in the room when I was there. Right. Uh, but then Brandon Carr was like – you know, it was crazy. I remember sitting in the sauna with Brandon Carr, and he's like, you know, you're here to just usher me on my way out of the league. And I'm like – wow. I'm like, remember being like, you're starting. I'm on the, I'm coming. I'm on, I'm second string, and uh, but it, it was just crazy to hear that because you know, this is uh, this definitely a young man's game. So you can yeah. you try to go as long as you can, but um, you know, hearing that and him actually helping me become a better player um, was really big. So the Brandon Carr and Eric Wood were probably my two guys. I mean, you're a multi time Pro Bowler in the National Football League, one of the better best corners in the National Football League, and we had a conversation earlier, me and the guys. 
because I redshirted when I first got to college. Yeah. And I said that was the best thing for me. Now guys come in and it's like they got to play right away. And if they don't play, they're heading into the transfer portal. For you, you mentioned a little bit earlier that you redshirted. What was about you redshirting? What was the best thing? Was that the best thing for you? And how did that help you get ready to go out there the following year and be a starter? For me, um, redshirting was by far the best. I think I saw the most growth in my game for sure, my red shirt freshman year. Is, yeah. is that a negative to red shirt at Alabama? Oh, uh, <laughs> like Alabama like... is, is very common. Um, <laughs> no one ever told me I was red shirting. That was the only weird thing. You know, every week. How does that? So what do they do? Honestly, how, how, does, how does Nick Saban let you know? Does, does he bring I don't you know to how the he office? Lets everyone else know, but I know everyone <laughs> else knew except me. And we were playing Texas A and M. We were up forty-two to zero, and the starters were still in. And so out of nowhere, all the freshman guys are like, yo, coach just told me I'm going in. And I'm like, coach didn't tell me anything. That I was. <laughs> so that's kind of where I realized I was redshirting. Uh, but I ain't going to lie, I was, I was pretty hurt. My first game, special team coach tells me, hey, I'm going to get you some reps out there at Gunner right. on punt. And every time you know, he brought the punt team up, I was came. And I looked at his eyes, and he just looked at me in the eyes, and just looked away. I'm like, and they, I did that all the way to the end. And uh, I was kind of... Like, a, man, I don't – he said I was going to play, but I didn't play. So it was two situations, the special teams and the 42-0, that I realized I was going to redshirt. But um, for me, it, it was a big growth. I was able to go to the scout team, cover Mark Cooper every day. Mm. Those are some long days, but, you know, it was uh, – <laughs> luckily I was on the scout, so I wasn't really supposed to be guarding them that well. But <laughs> he – Mark Cooper single-handedly made me a, a lot better press man corner. Uh, just – I mean, obviously he was up for the Heisman, I think, that year. Mm -hmm. But he was he was a very tough guard, so I uh, got a lot of growth. Ravens All Pro cornerback Marlon Humphrey joining the Rich Eisen Show. Kirk Borson here filling in for Rich. So you win a national championship in college, right? You get drafted first round in the National Football League from Alabama. Is there an added pressure to you coming from the university that you came from that you got to go in and produce right away? Do guys from Alabama feel that? I. I'm not sure. I know. I know. For me, I mean, even s scouts and coaches at the combine. You know, that was back when it seemed like a lot of Alabama players were getting to the league and not having this the same success. Yeah. So, you know, we had a, a couple corners, a couple safeties that you know didn't make that transition well, and that's stuff they were saying to me at the combine. They were like, "So what about you know, you know, Alabama guys don't do well when they come to the NFL?" And I'm like. I don't know what that has to do with me, but <laughs> I felt like I did have something to prove not only for, you know, myself, but for, you know, Alabama, you know, prospects coming out, you know, right. and then you look at it, you know, Eddie Jackson gets a Pro Bowl, Minka Fitzpatrick Pro Bowl. Um, I get a Pro Bowl. All these guys that I played with, I felt like, you know, we all kind of had a small chip on our shoulder because the guys in the past hadn't performed, you know, the best. So for me, I definitely felt like I had to, you know, I had to, you know, set that kind of erase that kind of, you know, thought process that that was even a, a factor so maybe i know it was for me yeah. yep so you've established yourself in the nfl you've been able to go out and show and prove that you're one of the best players in the league and so when you get to these otas and mini camps we just talked about it the ravens just finished their off season and you get a little downtime for you how does marlon humphrey spend his downtime i've been around you a, a little bit and you seem to be the most laid back, super chill, just ordinary dude that just, you know what? I'm just I'm just gonna enjoy my time. I'm gonna relax. Football is not on my mind. I like to look at the off season as so you gotta get your work out of it. <laughs> right. True. So that's like the only mandatory thing. Right. After that, I like to just see myself as not even a football player. So my girlfriend, we actually just got scuba certified, so I'm going scuba diving soon. I'm getting into the golf game. Okay. That's a very humbling game. Yes. I just, I didn't plan on, but I went to a football camp and they had dogs, so I just bought a Rottweiler. I was very, <laughs> I mean, a football camp Do and dogs, have... that was very rare. I, maybe, I don't know if that's a Cali thing or what. What's the dog's name? I wanted to name him Rambo. Rambo. She wanted to name him Jet. Rambo and Jet. So his name is Jet. Basically, <laughs> I, I want a Rambo, you want a Jet, so a Jet it is. Why don't you just name it Aaron Rodgers? Like, what are we doing? Ah, uh, honestly, he's in the AFC now, you know, maybe. But <laughs> I wanted to name him, uh, I don't know if the Ravens fans will be mad. And there's no S on the Jet, just Jet. Just Jet. Just Jet. Mm. Um, 
you know, I got my farm back home. There's a lot of things, There's honestly, of- that I I like to just randomly, you know, fall off into things. What's you know? the day-to-day on the farm when you get back? The day-to-day on the farm, I'm actually, I want to build a part three. On the farm. I want to build a part three. So mm-hmm. I got 229 acres in Alabama. Okay. I got an idea for a part three. I just don't want to hit too many balls in my little pond right there. That's the only <laughs> problem. I want to put it over a pond. I'm not the best golfer. Mm-hmm. So I got work to do there. I got a family reunion at the farm on around July 4th there that weekend. I got a lot planned. So you get that work. That's why I work out. I like to work out. I like to be working out at 630. Okay. Get that out of the way. And then the rest of the day is full of fun. So does, does Marlon like the, the workout videotaped? Do you like to put it out to social media? There's a lot of guys who like to be videotaped and show everybody, hey, this is what I'm doing. And you know the fans eat it up. Oh, my love God, it. look they at Marlon. He's locked in. Oh, my <laughs> God. Year seven, comeback season. Here come the Ravens. Are you like, are you one of those? I know for me, when I played in the league, I didn't want to be taped. I didn't want to have, like, the, all the workouts and all that. Yeah. I like to be private. I like to, when it was go time, work out, do your thing. But it was more of me being in my zone. How was it for you? I am a, well, I don't have a coach. So, I'm usually by myself. So, I don't really have the, I do like a, tr- session here with somebody every like once in a while but sometimes Mm -hmm. i don't think i'm not often but i'm not really a big fan of you kind of when you know you're on camera you do operate a little different work when you're working Um, out i feel like okay when you're playing a game you're just playing football right but you're working out you're doing a lot maybe editing you know you see the guy (laughs) i just don't really want to see you honestly right but you know you get kind of used to it when you work out with other guys and it i will say it does look cool (laughs) <laughs> Those videos do look pretty cool, and you think they're about to go. About wide receivers going to have 200, two hundred, two k yards, two thousand mm-hmm. yards, and then they have you know two hundred yards in the season, and it's just not the same. But I am a uh, more of a get it in by yourself. I kind of like the single grind, right. but it is uh, sometimes help a little easier to work out when you're working out with somebody and got the cameras and all the flash. <laughs> so I'm either or, but I definitely usually work out by myself. <laughs> I'm always intrigued by what's going on in that mind of Marlon Humphrey. When do you get a chance to to tweet or sit back and, and put out a tweet? Because I feel like you've had some tweets of recent, and if you want to follow him, you go to at Marlon as well on IG. A lot of Have things. You had tweets lately? Yeah. Um, so when it comes to tweeting, it's a lot of random things that probably just go through your mind, and, and I'm glad that you expressed that because we get a chance to to learn that it's just not all football all the time. Yeah. You know, people think that yeah. you're NFL player. You wake up, football, football, you go to sleep, yeah. football, football, football. But you've had some tweets of recently that I just want to just go over with you a little bit. Nothing crazy. <laughs> but uh, can we bring up a couple of the tweets here? See, what do I got? Who yeah. are tweet? Um, here's one tweet from uh, at Marlon underscore Humphrey. That's a good question. 100 good humans versus one gorilla. <laughs> Who wins? See, this was actually at the facility I brought this up. You brought this up. The gorilla was, wins. Yeah, we all said the group. So this so, is when yeah. people always think that the NFL locker rooms are serious and guys are about <laughs> football. Yeah, no. And yet you're in the lounge and we're talking yeah. about can 100 humans beat a gorilla? Yeah, we were. <laughs> yeah, this was this was at the cafeteria table. I'm like, guys, what do, what do we think here? And then we have a fairly larger guy on our team. Right. Uh, Falele, Godzilla. Uh-huh. Call him five, different names. Five, five, two, yeah. So yeah. We, he's like, I think he's around 400 pounds. And we were Six, saying, eight. you got... 100, yeah. 400, if you have 100 of him, yeah, you probably got a good chance of taking the gorilla down. But there still has to be a couple filets to get knocked out before even. <laughs> so there's a chance with that one. There, there was a lot of thought. There was right. a lot more thought one of that one. Now, is it 100 <laughs> on one, or is the gorilla just fighting one on one, but 100 straight times? No, he's 100 people. But you got to have 100 people that don't care about their well-being. So it's like the right. 300 almost, but 100. Yes. Like the movie 300. Yes. It's like, come in. It as is like... exactly like that. <laughs> but we just, we're all thinking, man, one punch to that gorilla to here is probably. That's a, that's a blow. That's, 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 that's a death blow. That's a, uh, more wow. on the uh, Marlon Humphrey tweets. because yeah, I, I, The gorilla's I said, the betting favorite on that one. Yeah, right I'm now, taking the gorilla. But we got more tweets coming up here. Um, Aaron Rodgers, he seems like he would just wake up one day and decide he's going to drop everything yes. and be an astronaut. What? 
I mean, how did you come up with this um, assessment of Aaron Rodgers? How, how does this I don't, just come about? I don't know Aaron Rodgers. Right. <laughs> but based on what I see, he seems like he is similar to me in the aspect of random things comes on his mind. <laughs> okay. Like, he just seems like a very free soul. Right. And he just, like, I, I, I don't know. I mean, he went, I know he did a little dark cave thing. Yeah, would apparently. you go to the dark, or go on a darkness retreat? I see, I... I don't know, but what I'm not sure what the benefit is, <laughs> but I don't. I kind of like the light a little bit. <laughs> right. A lot of us do. You might go in there and come out a new man, but he he seems like a very interesting guy. Right. I'll say that, and uh, I, I could just I don't know, man. He he, he seems very day. To, he goes day to day. That's what he seems mm-hmm. like. He's day to day. Today I'm a footballer. Today I'm, I might go astronaut today. I might do this. <laughs> Obviously a great football player, but a very free-spirited mind. That probably helps with this game, honestly. Well, you mentioned he's in the AFC now, man. I know that's in the AFC, man. He's in the AFC. <laughs> well, one last tweet before. Uh, got a couple more minutes here with Marlon Humphrey, Ravens cornerback. Uh, was today yeah, year was old bad. when I found out the Titanic was real. <laughs> Wait, what? That's what I, I, I really want to. I want to break so, this down because right, this is this is how this came. How does this come about? So like this might have seemed random. Yeah. I was on Instagram. Okay. And Golden, the the auction member, company, auction yeah, guy. Auction company. Yeah. Yes. He yeah. tweets. <laughs> um, I think he maybe had a Netflix thing. Okay. And he was going through a couple things that were maybe on the show, and it was a. He said Kate Winslet dress from the Titanic. And then I was like, wait, what do you mean the the dress or like the replica of, I'm not even exactly sure, but I was like, <laughs> was a Titanic real? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wait, I thought it was a, it was a movie. Right. <laughs> but then they're like, no, like it was a, it was a based on a true story. Right. It was a, not a like fake true story. It was a real yeah. true story. And then I was like, Wow. <laughs> And then it seemed kind of messed up that you're making that movie about these people like dying, which obviously you know it was a decent movie. It's pretty. Yeah, good it turns into a love story. Yeah, which didn't actually happen. So that was like a movie. <laughs> thing. Like, but I just didn't know that the movie was honestly confusing. Now that you, they should have made that more clear. You know what you and you. Which you did, part should they have made more clear? That, I mean, just think. They, I mean, it's a, they could have made that more clear somehow. Because right. I mean, they got people growing up watching that thinking Titanic was. Fake. Right. And well, actually, there's a lot more history about that. A lot of people, important people, died on that shit. Yes. Once I, I found out it was real. Right. And you did the research. A little, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. A lot of heavy hitters. Heavy hitters were on the Titanic. Yeah. So, yeah, that is a real movie. If you didn't know, if you're watching. You were not spoiled by the end of that movie. You, you were like, wow, this ship actually sinks. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, crap. Like, this is, <laughs> this is like, wow. Like, it, like it's, I need to rewatch it now. Because yeah. I was like, wow, it was a pretty good movie. And it's like, fake, but it's real. I, I will say this. You have enlightened me. Because like you mentioned just <laughs> now, that was like a made-up love story that never really happened. Never but really you happened. almost feel like that was part of the real Titanic. Exactly. And it never really happened. Exactly. Um, so like, that wasn't as bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Was, was, but I love the movie, Okay, though. maybe it was bad. I'm not sure. <laughs> I actually got a lot of... See, usually when I tweet... Yes. I, I just come to mind, I just tweet something. I don't really look at the replies, right. but I know I tweeted something either that was somewhat dumb or somewhat wild when someone right. personally texts me and is like, bro, you didn't blah, blah, blah. What are you talking about? I'm like, hey, <laughs> sometimes I tweet something yeah. and forget I even tweeted. This one actually <laughs> like was almost causing harm to myself. I'm like, crap, I guess I'm the only one that didn't know this. And Marlon, that one of your tweets was in the, in the Titanic thing, I guess I missed the true slide story in the movie. Like Normally they would put up there, like this exactly. is based on true events or this happened. Right. Yeah, this is based true... on a history of events. Yeah, and... this exactly. Is fic- I missed that slide, I guess. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and I definitely missed that slide. I got a couple more questions for you. <laughs> I, I know one... And I've been watching this ever since you talked about it before. I forget when you, you talked about it. But why does every time the version of Madden for that season comes out, they always have a Baltimore Raven getting... Every time. Every time. A Baltimore Raven is either getting stiff-armed or every getting time. juked 
or missing a tackle. Why is that? Why is Madden doing that? Does Madden, the franchise, have it out for the Baltimore Ravens? I think the Madden franchise does. Every time, it, for some reason, why am I in the clip every time? I don't know. <laughs> it's like every time I like, get the new Madden, Marlon Humphrey gets ran over, Marlon Humphrey gets moss, and I'm just like, I don't know. Even like, why is it even I'm in the background chasing somebody? Like, right. you know, it's just always, I don't know, maybe Ravens sells? I don't know. Right. Well, they don't ever put a cowboy. Cowboy player, that's America's team. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying, Madden, you should think about it, refigure it out. But no, they always, that always is a thing. Maybe they should give us the copy first if they're going to put us on there as advertising. <laughs> but it's definitely a thing. I would like to be off the, or maybe we could be scoring. Scoring for the But we're always on defense. Okay. Getting killed, or yeah. ran over, or. They need to fix that. I don't know. Maybe they're just forgetting that it's the same team every time. It's a possibility of that. Yeah. Um, can you name the two Ravens that have been on the Madden cover? There have been two Ravens. There's been two Ravens? Two Ravens have been on the Madden cover. Oh, I know, actually. Who are they? Jamal and Ray. Mm. One is Ray. Oh, Jamal Lewis was on there? I think he was on was there as a... Was he on the Brown? Was Joe Flacco wasn't on there. Mm-mm. The guy, he just signed a big contract with the richest contract in NFL history. <laughs> <laughs> you might see him a lot. You might see him That's a bad lot. Ball. This is bad ball. Obviously, Lamar. I don't know Lamar how I didn't even think of Lamar. Yeah. I guess I was thinking. Yeah, I know. Duh. I, I do got one last. I got to ask you one last football question because you talked about it a little bit. You walked in, you had this bright smile on your face. And the one thing you said, weapons. We've got weapons. So, weapons. as an OG, a guy who's in that That's defensive weapons. backfield, who probably can kind of relax a little bit when he's at practice because you kind of understand the defense, you know the defense. But when you sit back and look at the offense now that you guys got in Baltimore, we already mentioned the quarterback, Lamar Jackson, but Mark Andrews, you draft Zay Flowers. Here comes Odell Beckham Jr., DuVernay. We're just naming somebody. How has it looked for you on the opposite side? It's looked uh, really good. Um, in the past, we've had we've had some guys, but now we got like I think in the past we've had teams coming to games like okay, we could probably double this guy and be right. kind of fine. Um, while you know, I've been going week to week, and you're like, okay, you, you can't really double anybody because you're in trouble either way. If you right. whoever you double, it, they got this guy. So we kind of have, um, to me, just some really elite weapons that if you – I know on the other side, defense is going to look, okay, who do we want to eliminate the most and who do we think we can at least survive with this? So I think we've on paper put together, you know, a really tough offensive roster as far as, you know, pass catchers. And mm -hmm. um, it's exciting, but the practice yeah. is, is, is not – there's not much relaxing in practice anymore. There's not many <laughs> I gotcha. like, oh, I, I, you know, I kind of you got to be ready to go, which mm -hmm. which is really good for both sides. You know, you want to you want to be good, you want to be great. The best way to do that is get the work in and practice. And so, I think you know, EDC and the front office, what they've done this off season has been just really good as far as putting us putting our quarterback, you know, in a great position, paying our quarterback, getting some more weapons for him, and um, even on defense, getting getting some weapons we've got. It's a uh, I think it'll be a really fun season. It'll be some really competitive training camp practice. It might be some, might be some fights out there. You might be getting reports oh, wow. about everything. Ooh. Yeah, it might be, it might be war out there. So, really? I'm excited, I'm, but I'm really excited uh, to get that work in I may, practice. I may take a trip up there. I always feel like I'm going to I'll like be sure to fight when you come. Just let no, me know. I'll just get a fight going. It has that. Um, that was like Game of Thrones type of feel going to, <laughs> if you've never been to the Ravens facility, it's like a big giant castle and they have love the it. gates. Love it. And it raised that gate up and it's like you're going to this, I, I this love castle. The, what is it? What is it? It's uh, Owen Mills. Owens Mills. One Owens Owen? Mills. Owens Mills see? I love the castle with the trees. It is a very nice, we had a picnic out there, a big old picnic out there. It was just such a nice, the view is just nice. Man. Just <laughs> all that grass. You see know. the deer coming in to work. You appreciate a lot, man. You do. I appreciate life. There we go. You know what I mean? That's, that's, uh, 
<laughs> well, you know what? I'm not going to hold you up anymore. I know you guys uh, enjoying an off season, so I'm going uh, to let you continue your off season, get to the farm, do all of that. And I can't wait to see you play this upcoming season watching Ravens football. Marlon Humphrey, appreciate cool. the time. Thank you. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.